My queerness informed me that every time I'm holding a hand on a street, I'm not just on a date, I'm making a political statement. Every time I take my shirt off, every time I'm, I'm representative of myself, I'm giving permission for my body to be seen and absorbed. People might laugh. Let them laugh. Stick your fucking titties in their face. Like, who gives a shit? Can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? I've had a lot of changes in my 40s, like in the past few years, like a lot of things that have been different about me. I've been able to express that a lot through my clothing. I just got my ears pierced. I paint my nails now. I have tooth candy. <laughs> I have things that I don't think I would have had the courage to have done earlier in my life. It really started when I came out of the closet in 2014 professionally, and I really spoke my truth to everyone. I live in this state of freedom right now and I feel especially obligated to communicate it towards queer people and especially queer people of size or just any person who's felt like an other. It's actually funny because now that I actually have the money to buy like let's say like a pair of Balenciaga shoes or whatever, the sneakers that like I want, they don't even make my size. Quite frankly, they can go fuck themselves. Mm -hmm. If the size is not going to be inclusive, I don't even want it anyway. I always told my agents, I was like, I don't want to play fat for fat sake or gay for gay sake, even with Mean Girls. But when Damien came by, it was just like, the script was so funny. And the character, like, he didn't like get pushed in a locker. He didn't get his head dunked in a toilet. He was just allowed to like breathe. And he was described in the script as uh, probably fat, but definitely gay which made me so happy because even that description was something that I'd never seen before. And it was just so inspiring. So can you talk about what has been a biggest insecurity that you have overcome or are working on overcoming? The biggest insecurity that I think I've battled in my entire life is funny because it's kind of what I'm known for now but it was taking my shirt off. Like it was something that just was literally terrifying. And then um, my first movie, Bully, in my audition, I had to take my shirt off. When I'm doing this movie, it gets to be the, the day. Everybody knew that it was a big deal for me to take my shirt off. Like the costume people knew that I was building up to the courage to do it. And as soon as they take my shirt off, one of my co-stars goes, ew, <laughs> fucking gross. Look at him. Like the absolute like worst fucking thing that you could ever think. And I didn't give a shit. I wasn't like devastated. Everyone didn't join in and laugh. When people say to me, like, how do you take your shirt off? What I basically say is just like, what are you afraid of? And then they're like, I don't know, people might laugh. And I'm like, well, they weren't gonna fuck you anyway. Let them laugh. Stick your fucking titties in their face. Like, who gives a shit? And maybe you might just normalize your body and you might save another kid in middle school being tortured. Every time I'm, I'm representative of myself or I show something, I'm giving permission for my body to be seen and absorbed. You know, I had some guy, some guy write me, he said to me, young man, I wish I had the courage that you had. I'm 66 years old and I still can't take my shirt off. I said, what are you waiting for, 77? Like, what the fuck do you care about these people? And then he sent me a picture later with him and his partner in inner tubes, like with their shirts off. They're like, we never had the courage. And now we said, what the hell? We're in a committed relationship. We're not even trying to fuck anybody else. Let's just get the sun. They're like, we've never felt so free. If you were constantly covering up, the differentness in us is not gonna be seen. You know, there might be a guy who loves like, you know, a hairy chest and doesn't know you have one. You don't know what it is. And maybe people just don't see it. And it's something that you didn't have. I didn't have it. Even when I saw a fat guy with their shirt off, they were either being made fun of and thinner than me, or they didn't have the same type of body I have. I have like a, a kind of like a love handle, kind of like muffin top moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't call love handles unless anyone's grabbing onto them, baby. And believe me, there are men that like to hold on to that while they kiss me. And at first it was shocking. And now I'm like, baby, grab on. I could maybe want to change. I could say to myself, hey, like I want to, I would like to be healthier. I'd like to have more agility. And I could make decisions to do that. But me ordering a salad today isn't going to make me four waist sizes thinner today. I have to learn today to love myself. And at first, you got to lie to yourself. At first you have to say to yourself, I love this part of my body. And pretty soon they go, yeah, you look great. I'll compliment his this or I'll compliment his that. And then the way that they treat you actually gives you actual confidence. It's like this weird spell. Can we go back a little bit to um, your coming out journey? Like what's going on in your head about your queerness versus like what's going on outside? You know? I always knew I was gay, I guess. My first boyfriend was five and a half years and we told everyone we were roommates all the way up until the last day. I went to conversion therapy. Like right before I was in Bully, I put myself in conversion therapy. I still think Jesus is rad. At the time I was like, I put my entire self into religion, which I don't think is healthy at all. My family was actually pretty 
accepting in a way. I wouldn't say that it was celebrated as much as it was lovingly tolerated. It was funny because when I was closeted and I was in musical theater, I was being told by directors, you know, if you were gay, you'd probably get more roles because everyone goes out to the club and that's how they all know each other. Then like when I got into film, <laughs> it was the opposite. Like don't even say anything. I was terrified of the ramifications on my career. And it's crazy. I worked as a bouncer in gay clubs. I used to tell people I was straight there and then slowly slip someone on my number. I was still gay because I wanted to experience everything. If I could do it all over, I would be out from the get-go. It wasn't all fear-based. Part of me was like, I'm going to be covert and I'm going to come out one day and I'm going to tell everyone that you can be gay and love God. What happened was that the 10th anniversary of Mean Girls happened and I got like all these letters. I got this letter from someone that said, I don't know if you're gay or not and it doesn't matter. And I was like, oh God, it matters so much. I need to come out. And he goes, but when I was in eighth grade, I was tortured for being a sissy and I was beat up for being chubby. And then your movie came out. On the first day of my freshman year, the popular senior girls walked up to me and said, you're like Damien, come sit with us. And he was like, thank you so much for giving me something that I could point to in media and say, that's me and feel comfortable in my own skin. And I cried and I was like, this is how I come out, you know? And I came out writing about that letter in a letter to Damien and IndieWire. I, I just marvel at God because to have the opportunity to make anyone feel like, like they're worthy. And for me to be doing some kind of like completely dream role and the gift of that to be something so socially impactful. We look at so much in this world and we think like, what could I really do? This is something that I'm so proud of. I'm still hardcore repping Mean Girls like after like 18 years. I lean into it for that reason because I still know that my visibility matters. I still know that seeing a big, loud, queer person breathing and taking up space is something that gives other people the permission to do so. I think uh, body image is uh, it's an extreme problem in the gay community. One of the strangest feelings about being gay was going, here's my people and showing at the club and then realizing my people didn't want me <laughs> because my body was different. Everything that we try to buy or attend or whatever comes with a side of abs. It's a little frustrating that we're only given one image as desirable. I was really proud to be a part of looking. You never see a queer person uh, of size sexualized in the gay lexicon, it just doesn't happen. And like my character Eddie was fucking like, and doing shit that like people don't normally get to do and like loved in spite of his uh, bigness and queerness and um, his HIV status. That role also gives so much representation to so many people. Did you want to say something about your shirt? I do. Some people call it a wife beater, which I think is a disgusting term for it. This to me symbolizes a lot because of the, of the show Sopranos. The guys that are like really obsessed with bigger guys, I've asked them, I've been like, what was the first time that you knew you were like attracted to a bigger guy? And a lot of them told me James Gandolfini in Sopranos. They were showing a person who was like of a different size, like having sex on TV. And I think that was like sexual awakening for a lot of guys to see something different that was another choice of something that might be hot for them. I think about my courage, and it's not an ego term, I literally was terrified, but my courage to like do sex scenes and looking came from knowing that James Gandolfini uh, was able to show a person of a different size like doing that same thing and the impact that it had had on my personal life. Yeah. When do you feel the most vulnerable? Candid photos. I am a great at my angles and I love, <laughs> love being known and photographed, but candid photos sometimes can be a little stressful for me. However, like, I will say, when I do a photo shoot, especially like a shirtless one, and the one picture that I'm cringing on the hardest is the first one I put out. I always try to push myself to the one that I'm like, ugh, I look really this there, I look that there, I'll put that one out first. And then I end up getting all these compliments from it. Last question, um, why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, why, why is it a good place to be? You know, uh, the only person that really loves you from like the day you're born to the day you die is yourself. And I think it's so important to, for you to be the nicest to yourself more than anybody else. And it took me a long time to realize that and to find a ways to have self-care. I've learned to date for myself. I say, hey, I want to see this play. I'm going to buy two tickets for it in two weeks. Don't know who I'm taking because I want to see that play. 
And then, you know, that week when someone says, hey, what are you doing Friday? I'm like, come with me. I got tickets to a play. Instead of me trying to buy something that someone else wants to go see and then getting stood up, I set myself, or whatever. I'm just saying, hypothetically, you set yourself up for all these disappointments in life. Stock up on the things that like mean something to you. If I want to see theater, I can't hope that I want to meet a guy that takes me to a play. Like, oh, like get out of here. I'm going to the play. That's a beautiful answer. Really, really beautiful. That was incredible, the whole thing. We want to extend a huge thank you to Pride Counseling for sponsoring this video. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and within 48 hours, Pride Counseling will match you with a licensed, trained, and fully accredited counselor that is LGBTQ plus friendly. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor and schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. We all need someone to talk to, right mom? One trillion percent. And Pride Counseling can help. We've got a special offer for you. Get 10% off your first month at pridecounseling.com slash style like you pride. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of What's Underneath with Danny. For more episodes like this, subscribe to Style Like You. And don't forget to head over to our Patreon where you can hear more of Danny's incredible interview. <laughs>